Hello and welcome to Raw Vlog 44. Raw Vlogs are recorded in front of a live beverage now due to our uh, social distancing. They are delivered to you just like before, raw and unedited. In today's Raw Vlog, we are sitting down and having a chat with friend of the channel and fellow mountain bike YouTuber, the Outsider MTB, also known as Tony. Wabam! Jambodi! Hey. I exist. There he is. How you doing? I'm good, good, real good. <laughs> How you doing, Alan? I'm doing pretty good, man. <laughs> um, that kind of stuck that that what couple of videos I did. Yeah, man. I you it. know, I would la I was laughing so hard. Uh, when you were doing that in that video. And now every time I say hi to anybody on the trail, that's kind of what's going through my head. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> good, good. Yeah. Uh, so real quick, I wanted to have Tony on, um, aside from the fact that we're friends and that I haven't seen his face in a really long time um, because of everything that's going on. Um, I wanted to have Tony on because he brings something to the mountain bike YouTuber world that nobody else is really doing. Um, and we're going to talk more in depth about that in the main section, but it's really kind of his um, uh, inspiring myself as well as all of you who, who know his channel um, to go out and ride new trails and and explore new stuff. So, yeah, that's kind of that's that's who this guy is to me. Uh, is there anything you want to add to that? Oh, that's nice of you to say. That's yeah. that, that's cool. Um, I don't really have anything to say to that. Yeah, I mean, I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. I know. I uh, I definitely agree with everything you said. So uh, that that's how I started the channel is mm. basically what you said and uh, branched off a little bit from that now. But that's still the main theme of the channel for sure. Very cool. So before we get into that, um, we're going to do our normal segments. We're going to do some channel news. Uh, I'll start it off. My channel news is uh, I'm going to be doing the trail cross, the 510 tra trail cross review from demoing it at Sedona Mountain Bike Festival. Um, I didn't do that this last week. If you saw the video, you know that I did, you know, how to social distance while on the bike. Uh, I don't know what other channel news I have. That's it. What do you got? um personal is it is, is it like channel news is this like wait this is different than the stoke of the week so i'm gonna save my stoke of the week yeah. i don't have any channel news <laughs> no channel news well what's your <laughs> you got a video coming up uh yeah a little bit of video coming up so my stoke of the week and my channel news kind of i guess is intertwined then because uh, i skated for the first time in like six months this last last saturday uh for like a full afternoon and i'm just today getting over being sore from it because <laughs> <laughs> I haven't used muscles like that in so freaking long. Uh, I forgot about that. Like you can mountain bike every day, but then you can go and do some an activity where you do you're just using muscles that are, have been inactive for so long. And then I felt like I ran like 80 miles a day before. Anyway, uh, first day of skating, and then I'm going to combine my first video with a, a skate and wait, uh, mountain bike you, rent. Before you do the stoke, you have to do the song. Oh wait, what's the song? Stoke of the week. Stoke of the week. <laughs> Heather just looked at me and gave me a bad look. <laughs> uh, yeah, this look of the week as I skated this week for the first time in six months. And uh, I have a video coming out on Monday that's going to intertwine my riding and skate life. So not in depth. It's just, you know, those two things together for the first time. A lot of people have been asking about my skating. So I'll be skating this week. Right on. Very cool. Um, my stoke of the week is... Wow, is actually just getting to see you. I, it sounds funny. I know. I know everybody's going to be like, bromance in the comments. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, that's that's my story. No, but I, I will add to that. This is good because there has been, I mean, I we're, we're trapped in our houses right now. This yeah. is the first time, this is the closest we've come to hanging out. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. I, I'm pretty stoked as well. That's yeah. pretty rad. Cool. Um, oh, uh, real quick, I forgot to say, I should have done this early on. If you're unfamiliar with this channel, this is the Airhorn channel. This is MTB Allen's Airhorn. It is a companion channel to my main channel, which is MTB Allen, which if you click way over there, somewhere up there, then you can get to that channel and check it out. Um, also, if you are listening to this as a podcast, 
um, cool. Uh, so this is uh, just the audio from our YouTube channel. And uh, apologies for any visuals and YouTube references that we'll be making. Deal with it. Yep. All right. So I totally forgot to do the thing. So Stoke of the Week is what we just did. Um, so we're going to now, unless you have any other, do you have any other Stokes of the Week? No, that's enough for me. So next up is who this, and that is who is Tony. So I um, sent Tony some notes earlier, and I asked him uh, to help us get to know him by doing some things, some a little bit of homework. And the first bit of homework is to give me uh, – I said three to five milestones. I don't know how many you came up with. I mean, I have a few. Uh, it's I, like, wrote down bullet points, but – sure. Um, I'm just going to go with it. How about that? I'm just going to run it right now. So these are milestones (laughs) in your mountain biking life. uh, Just kind of a way to give us a little bit of a timeline of you and mountain biking. Yeah. So backing up further than further than I'm going to talk about right now. I did live in California when I was a kid, when I was in my twenties, I moved back to Connecticut. So coming back, let me start and say this. Connecticut is the milestone of my mountain bike start because I, uh, was in Connecticut, still skateboarding in, in uh, when I still lived there. And right before I moved back out here, I started mountain biking. Uh, I worked at a shop and uh, they had rentals and I went out with some friends that were really good. Got me on the bike and I was hooked. So uh, I had a giant rain when I moved to California. That's my milestone is like, ex- like saying like, okay, now this is what I'm going to do and commit to this activity, you know, and, I, and didn't know anything I, about it. I remember you saying that like you would, been riding some in in Connecticut, but then when you moved to California, you were like, "Yeah, a game changer." I mean, it's a totally different situation over here. Like Connecticut, the trails are very cross country. It was was it was like as soon as you go in, you're up, you're down, you're up and down. It's rock crawling. It's, it was very slow paced. Um, I would love to go and ride there again, but knowing what I know now, it's completely different from California. California was the first place when I got here where I felt like I climbed for 45 minutes and then i had this insane descent for 15 minutes down i had never experienced anything like that and it kind of blew my mind and that was like even more hooked than when i was when i came out because like this is a whole different activity it like totally opened me up to the varieties of mountain biking and i learned more of like cross country versus downhill versus like and even in back then a couple of years ago Duro wasn't even a, a word back then but right uh, the trails out here really are like like I would take my helmet off and ride up a fire road for 35 minutes and then explore this amazing descent. And like, that yeah. was completely different. So that was a milestone. And, and I think um, if we want to get specific on milestones, um, I would say when I got to California, learning the trail systems was also a, another upgrade for me. Cause if you're in an area and you don't know how to ride the trails or access them and um, you know, find the best loop within them, then you're kind of lost out there, right? Like you're just kind of like at the trailhead, like with a map and which I did at first, didn't know about trail forks or MTV projects or anything. And I was mm-hmm. just like going down a bad fire road with no single track. And then like, this kind of sucks, you know, <laughs> and, and, and then eventually learning and like exploring on the internet and getting uh, into the, the research and figuring out how to do these things, you know, mm-hmm. and I, I kind of opened my eyes up to like, um, getting into the loops and figuring out my rides and getting on a couple solid base rides where I could have a go-to with no map and just know them. That started in Laguna Mm -hmm. and uh, Whiting Ranch over there in Mission Viejo. And uh, yeah, that kind of like blossomed me into this world I'm in right now, basically. Like that idea, when I moved out here and didn't know anything, kind of is what started my channel. Like the completely, complete confusion. I was like, People are, if I'm this confused, I just moved here. Everybody else is probably the same way if they yeah. don't know how to ride or, is that you know, like your next, this thing. Is that kind of like your next milestone is like converting it into? Um, oh, actually, that that's different. Like I would say the next milestone is like actually specific to riding my bike, which would oh. be when I realized like after riding for a little bit out here, something I never even thought about in Connecticut was weight distribution you know, and how to, how to, uh, completely like handle your bike. Basically, you know, yeah. you don't just grab onto the bars and hold on, you know, you're like, uh, <laughs> you don't, I, <laughs> <laughs> you 
you know, you're, you know what I mean? Like, and you know that, and I think every writer that, that is listening right now understands that transition when you get that really, okay, like leaning back is leaning back too far is too much forward. You're going to go over your bars, um, cornering, like things like that, that started a transition that opened up levels for my riding to where I felt like I could go faster and learn more. And that's where the confidence comes from. And I feel like learning that distribution of your weight and stuff like that was the pinnacle for me to start advancing in skill progression. Mm, okay. Cool. Yeah. Nice. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, cool. Well, those are the milestones. Like it. Yeah. Milestones. Uh, all right. So moving on then the next interview segment or the next getting to know who this is remarkable ride. This can actually, I said recent, I think in the outline, but this can be whatever remarkable ride you want to talk about. Um, the only, like when you sent me the little, a little outline for the intro, I, the first thing that came to mind is one I wrote down, which is, uh, San Luis Obispo. I did a ride caught in uh, an area called the Ukes. And I was very surprised by this. Uh, another subscriber had turned me on to it and I was heading up to sea otter and it's not one of those rides where you're going to be like, it's not death defined with crazy drops and insanity. It was just this beautiful, like legend of Zelda landscape <laughs> in San Luis Obispo with green everywhere. And there's like this hidden secret bike park in the middle of it. And I was blown away. Like you can do laps on this little bike park. And then on the way out, I took the long way, followed the train tracks and I just came across like, just one of the most beautiful landscapes I've ever seen in my life. And I was just like, kind of sat there for almost like 20 to 30 minutes. I just took in the view and I was just like appreciative because the, you don't get to see that stuff. I would never have seen that stuff if I wasn't on my bike, you know, like yeah. the places your bike takes you, you know how cliche that is. But in that moment, I was like, I don't care if it's cliche or not. Like this is one of the best locations I've ever been in. So that, that ride kind of stays with me and I can't wait to get back to do it because it had, the skate park element, the, the bike park element, and like this, like just rad crossover into like that landscape. You know, that's kind of yeah. what I I love about riding. Yeah, we yeah, um, I think like Matt in the in the last raw vlog talked about that aspect about like how it can just get you out there, like on a bike you can go so far so fast. Yeah, 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 totally. It takes you places you never saw, and then I love the aspect of going on a ride too where you've never been on where you end up in places that you're like, wait, this is here. Like that's, that's kind of how I felt on that ride. You know, like yeah. you just pop up in a place and you're just like, I had no idea I was going to be here today. That's so rad. Yeah. So with that, what would you say is a destination you must ride? Okay. So the cliche one's obviously Whistler, right? Yeah. And everybody's like that. And I went, I was able to go there twice last year, which I couldn't believe I was able to do that. I did. And it lives up to the hype. I would say that. Uh, I'm not going to get too talking into the Whistler because everybody knows about that. So I would say the other one is where you just were, Sedona. Yeah. I don't know if you could back me up on that, but like, not 100%. only are the, are the not only are the is the riding amazing, but everywhere you look is amazing. Like the views and just the landscape, it does feel like you're transported to like another part of the world. You know, like everything looks different, and yeah, it's just a rad place. Like you, I, it's a different what, vibe. What tripped me out about that place, so, you know, I've seen the footage for a long time of Sedona, and you're just looking at these gorgeous landscapes and amazing trails, and in my head, I'm like, okay, how long does it even take to get to one of those? And then you realize it's like 15, 20 minutes out of town. Like, yeah. it's right there. Like, like hogs, like the hog sloop is like right freaking there. Yeah. Um, you, you know, you can like get back, have, you know, you can like go ride hogs. Um, get back to your place, take a shower and go eat in like no time. I, yeah. I just, everything you know, it, everything is, is just right there. It, it, and even when you come into Sedona, doesn't it feel like you're already like in your car, you enter it and you're just like in the middle of this thing. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's, it's just surreal. It's a, it's a rad place. So I would say, yeah, Whistler, obviously Sedona for sure. Especially if we have a, uh, both of our channels have a lot of people from California guys, it's only, what is it like six, seven hours to get there? Six hours. Well, uh, seven hours for you, I think six hours for me. Cause I'm like an yeah. hour east of you, but it's really, it's easy and it's an easy drive too. I mean, there's mm-hmm. a whole section where you don't even need to drive. You just like, it's <laughs> yeah. just, it's just straight <laughs> like, cruise control and just 
Yeah, older. not even that. Yeah. I just I fell asleep actually. I slept for like two hours <laughs> driving by myself because you know <laughs> you it was just hold us put a stick up to the steering wheel. And <laughs> yeah, <there. laughs> yeah we got to do that. We got to make that road trip um, for sure. But uh, yeah, I would agree. That's definitely a, a good place to go. Um, so man, we're we're sixteen minutes in or fifteen minutes in, and we're already to the why we here. And that's really just kind of like have a conversation. Um, uh, Tony really wanted this to be pretty unstructured, but I, I, I kind of have a theme. And the theme is what I was talking about before that, like, did, did we, we had, we had a chat before. I don't know if this was part of, anyway, I'll just say it again. Um, you know, like, there's a lot of us mountain bike YouTubers out there and a lot of us, you know, for a long time, we're just doing POV footage with some cool music. And then uh, Tony comes along and he's like, starts off by doing trail guides. He starts off by telling you how to get there, telling you all the turns. He, he gives us the Strava. He gives us the uh, trail forks, all that stuff. So what I really dug about it was that um, you, you were, your channel offered what I would call like aspirational content. You know, like when I look at like somebody writing, when I look at like Brandon Semenik writing, that is like extremely aspirational in that like, oh my God, that's amazing. But it's beyond my reach. Yeah, right. Too. It's something we'll never do. Right. But <laughs> the, the stuff that you were doing, right, was I think for myself as well as for a lot of people was aspirational, but within reach. You know, you were going mm -hmm. out and searching out trails that you didn't know um, and bringing us along for that ride and then watching you do that made me go, wow, I really need to get better at, at navigating at finding my way around and not just riding the trails I know or being led around by somebody who knows the trails to like go out on those full on adventures. And I think that's one of the really cool things about your channel is that like, um, uh, I mean, don't take this the wrong way, but you're not like this, like crazy, amazing rider. You're not like, like Nate Hills. You're definitely a skilled rider and you definitely I'm ride aware. gnarly stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And our commenters remind us, um, yeah. but, but you are like a solidly skilled rider. Um, I would say definitely better than average, but what you do is approachable, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think like, that's one of the things that really is success successful about your channel. And by the way, if you haven't already seen, the channel let me just kind of like give this give you a little shout out so you know check this guy out if you haven't already um check out his channel bunch of cool stuff wow look at your 8.4 through 2000 subscribers let's get him up to 10 crew you. you so check him out so anyway yeah. So yeah, I mean, I, you know, like talk about that real quick because I I feel like that was part of your experience and you you kind of brought your own experience to that. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I talked about it briefly before, but I uh, I didn't start this channel. Uh, I wasn't set out to be like, hey, I'm going to be an MTB YouTube channel. I I got the Rilo camera. Uh, I, I work in skateboard in, in the skateboard industry, and Rilo had talked to me, and they sent me this Rilo camera, and they said it was stabilized. So I started using that. And uh, I take it on rides and it's funny, I would like bring home videos and make little edits for Heather and, and Pip. And I would like talk to Pip while I was riding and stuff <laughs> like that at first. And then um, she's like, got tired of what, me what, making the verse. She's like, why don't you just do this thing and like figure out something and do it for everybody else. And so it was kind of in the back of my head and that's what I was practicing. But like, that's what I did. Like, so I was like, you know what? Like I moved here from Connecticut. I didn't know anything about the trail systems. I had at that point, put like a year or two years into like figuring out my Laguna rides and all these trail systems around here through the apps. And I had a pretty good knowledge base. And I was like, you know what, that's a good idea. Like, I feel like a lot of people out here that not only moved here or new to mountain biking, but people that even live here may not even know these trails Wait, exist around them, right in their neighborhoods. What year did you move to Southern California? So I moved here in 2013, but I really gave the, the mountain biking a little bit of a break and then started skating again pretty hard uh, in that period. And then I want to say about three, four years ago is when I really dipped back into the mountain okay. bike thing. I okay. bought an intense bike and like bought the big bike, you know, like the, the, the split put down a few grand and was like, I'm in it again. Okay. So I moved here from Connecticut and had the bike. 
kind of put it in the back burner for a while. And then I dipped back into it a couple of years later um, and found it again when I was like, figured out the system here and how it works and everything like that. So it kind of hooked me again. Actually, somebody at work that mountain biked kind of like brought me under their wing and was like, hey, let's ride together at lunch. And that yeah. brought me in. My office was was right outside Wedding Ranch in the Luz. So we would go on our lunches and just he'd like be like, follow me and do what I do. And then help me still progress. Brian, who who he's been on one of my videos. But anyway, that's what kind of opened me up and like it was like hooked again. And that's where it all started again for me. Mm. And that's where um, everyday riding happened again. But, you know, that's where the channel blossomed from was like learning all the trails and offering that up. And I don't know, you, we talked about this before, like the first videos I did were, were basically like the videos I would make for Pip, you know, like <laughs> and Heather, uh, but I was talking to like everyone, you know, it wasn't like talking to Pip, but like, that's how it felt like I was making videos like that. But it's amazing how you go through it and learn like, about camera and, and technique and like editing. And so I, I feel like that's a thing that people don't talk about a lot um, on camera. You know, once you figure yeah. out what you're doing, like I, yeah, I didn't expect to be an MTV YouTuber and, and whatever, but like it happened. And then once you're in it, you're in it. You're like, Oh, this is great. People are, are using this content and you know, I want it to be better. And you learn like any, any skill set. And so it's cool to go back and look, let me, there's a little thing in there. I want to, pick at so people started finding use in your videos and you you know like tell me about that experience when you started hearing from people in your comments you know like yeah. what that felt like and, and how that affected what you did um i was like to be honest you kind of shocked because i just i just put it out there didn't know anything about thumbnails or titles and just people <laughs> would search stuff and just be like find it and be like you know what i rode i rode um you know, the Fullerton loop today because of your video and the Fullerton loop, if you, if you guys are watching, it's a pretty beginner trail, go check it out. But it's very complicated because there's streets and ins and outs and you really can't follow a map. It's better to have like somebody show you. Um, but people were able to navigate that by my video and, and see visual aids to help them get into the loop. And then once you do it once, you got it. So I started people seeing people watching a video like that or a couple of the videos, Santiago, Santiago Oaks. And I was like, oh man, like people like are using this as a tool, like, like trail forks or something. And I was like, that's exactly what I wanted them to do. And that's amazing. So I had this like kind of rush of like, hey, like maybe this could be a thing. Like people are gravitating towards this and using this and, you know, like just keep doing it. And uh, as that, you know, the timeline went on, it turned into trail guides and I feel like now it's it's about trail guides, but it's also like uh, I'm so committed to mountain biking and, and so are you. And so we ride together, too. And we're not only focused on riding new places, but um, skill progression. So yeah. that's that's kind of where I, I'm at right now. I'm an in between like balance where I'm like, I want to like yeah, we're older now, but <laughs> you know, like <laughs> but like still I, I hate when people I, I don't want to go off on a tangent, but I hate when people say like, they leave comments and they're like, you know, I'm like 45. I've never done a jump. Like, uh, let's leave that for the kids. Like, dude, I'm like in my forties and so are you. And yeah. we're learning jumps right now. You, you're not too old to learn this stuff. Just take it easy. Like don't <laughs> just like blaze well, into the session jump at sky park. out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> right. well, do you, do you think that, so both of us come from a skateboarding background and I wonder, so it's kind of, what do you think? Do you think that 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 has some mm -hmm. effect on how we're approaching this? Because both of us are comfortable with with crashing. Both of us are comfortable with like, you know, maybe we don't love injuries, but we're pretty comfortable with getting scuffed up and yeah. and risk assessment and those kind of things. Do you think that helps us out a little bit more? Yeah, hundred percent. I would say probably more than we even know. I mean, for me crashing and getting hurt is something I've been doing since I was 12 and I never stopped doing it, you know, like, um, what else? Like also it comes into riding pumping transition. If you yeah. know how to pump on a ramp, pumping on a bike through mm -hmm. jumps and through berms and things like that, you know, this, if you know how to pump on a skateboard, you get that feeling of like getting that energy from a transition. Right. Yeah. Also it helped me when I talked about before about body positioning, when I started to learn jumps, I started to 
bring back memory stamps from skateboarding and doing big gaps or jumping over, you know, gap to gaps on a skate park and leveling out your body. It's similar to on a skateboard when you have to stay over your board and maintain that flight to come back in evenly, right? So um, I think jumps came a little bit easier. So maybe I'm over saying this, like if you're 45, like go out and learn jumps. There is some background that I think you and I have had with things like that, but it doesn't mean you can't yeah. try stuff and like I mean, gradually progress, you know? And I, and I fully like, I get where you're coming from where I, I also, when somebody comes at me with the, the, the age excuse, like mm-hmm. it always rubs me the wrong way. I it, it was rubbing me the wrong way when I was still skateboarding, you know, every other day. Um, partly because like people would always think I was 10 years younger than I am. Yeah. And you know, I would be at the skate park and I would do a run and then they would be like, Oh man, wait till you get my age. You won't be able to do that. Yeah. And I'll be like, How old are you? And they would always be like five years younger than me. And I'd be like, <laughs> Man, you just like, don't ever use age, in, age as an excuse, you know? Yeah, because it, it is that. It's an excuse. It's an excuse for you to say, I gave up. And maybe that sounds gnarly, but it's kind of true. Like, hey, yeah. it, you know what? I'm going to take you know it back. I won't I, say it's like you gave up, but I'm going to say, like, you made a choice not to regress. And that's cool. Be mellow and just stay within your your comfort zone. But I don't know. Like, yeah, you, I, I'm speaking for myself, and I think for you, the comfort zone isn't really that fun. You know what I mean? No. Like, it's boring. Well, I think I think what you mean is is like know your comfort zone and mm-hmm. step just a little bit outside of it. Yeah, you don't have to go that far. Just a totally. little totally. And then and then when you do, the more you step out of it, there's a new comfort zone, right? Yeah. And then you're in somewhere new, and that's mm-hmm. where the skill progression happens. Like yeah. it's not going from your comfort zone to like Brandon Seminar. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it's it's going with in levels that you proceed with caution that yeah. you're allocating your skills to new things and trying new things, and being a little scared. But knowing you can do them, right? Like you yeah. gotta know if you're gonna commit to something and know you can do it. If you don't know you can do it, then hey, maybe it's not your time, you know? It's it's about being smart too. Yeah. And even if you're smart, you're gonna crash. We crash all the time. Right. And that thing about settling, you know, I just read a quote which was um resignation is confirmed desperation. Mm. Right? Good. Yep. You know, that's that's the row. Like, yeah, I yeah. Read, like wrote that. Um, I've actually been any, reading anything a writer can you can take to any platform, right? Like, that's right. so cool. Yeah, that's but, great. But it's it's funny, like reading Thoreau. Like, it's making me think about how, and I I don't want to put I'm, I don't want to put ourselves anywhere close to that level, right? But there have been people throughout um, literary history who have been out there saying, like, go outside you know, get away from quote unquote civilized society um, and get out there and remember who you are as a human being. And I feel like one of the things that you bring right to YouTube, you know, um, is something similar to that. You, you bring that like, you know, cause like I can go and ride, you know, the, the same loop at Laguna or I can go ride sky park every weekend. Like, <laughs> like I did uh, yeah. for a while and, and it can be really fun, but it's, you know, it's uh, the stuff that, you know, like actually in going and riding with you got me out there doing more stuff and experiencing more stuff. And I think you kind of bring that to the, to the dynamic, you know? Thanks man. That, I'm flattering to hear that. I mean, it, here, here's kind of like my taste of that. I, I've been there and I did that too. Like I had a couple loops when I started riding where I would, ride almost every other day, I would switch between two or three and I got bored, and didn't really feel like riding that much anymore. Mm. And uh, I didn't, I didn't say I, I wouldn't say I figured out why at the time, but I started, that's when I started using the apps and, and forcing myself to go to different locations. And that is like when I got my second wind of mountain biking where I was never bored again, because if I was like sick of a, a, a loop, I would like find a new one and then get refreshed and then ride this for a little bit and then come back to this. Mm. And I, you know, so, kinda... so here's the thing. A lot of people are, mm-hmm. and myself included, we're, we can be pretty scared to go ride some trail system that we don't know. Yeah, me um, too. Yeah, right. But the difference is, is you go and do it. So mm-hmm. like, you don't have to go into like super crazy detail on all the apps and all that stuff. But like, how would you, if you were going to like coach somebody 
on on how to go about they, they want to go ride a new trail system this weekend mm -hmm. like um and they have one picked out like what would you what would you tell them to do so they already have one picked out yeah sure okay then or they they, just, they heard about it or whatever you know they just i mean if you if you the first thing you do is i mean i'll just go through what i did i you go you go to mtv projects they're good for having full rides trail forks doesn't really have full rides they have more information like trail conditions and trails and more access to actual trails but they don't have like a loop that someone's put together mtv projects has an actual loop that riders have suggested and it's been ranked on so if you go to like orange county where we live and you go to top 20 rides those rides are for sure going to be easily navigatable and then you could pick blue green or black that's what I did. I'd be like, okay, I'm gonna try this one. So bring that app along and that's gonna show you how to do it. I mean, and as far as going on the actual ride, um, bring water, bring all the obvious essentials and just take it easy. If you don't think it's gonna be within your skill set, you're on a double black or a black trail and you just were riding blind, I'm not the best person to, to <laughs> say that I've done this, but um, take it easy because uh, you know, like you don't know what's in store for like, I've watched a video with Cam McCall recently and he's talking about jumps and he goes to a bike park. And I think you've actually said this too. You knew a buddy that did this. If they're going to hit a bike park and they're going on a new tray, a, a new jump line or something, they don't go and just send it. They go and they ride it and they feel it out and they see what they're in store for yeah. and get a vibe of the trail and see where the speed takes them. And then the next run they come in and they're like, okay, I got an idea. Let's send some of these, you know? So, that's how you really should be doing it to be safe, especially if you're solo and you're not following somebody that's a local. If you're if you're there with somebody that's a buddy that's ridden it before, you know, maybe follow their lines. But like yeah. solo riding, honestly, even though I'm not I don't do it every single time when I'm making a vid, like you really should be safe about it and take it easy the first time and get the vibe going. And the next time like, okay, look, I got this thing. And that first time it sounds like you want to set the expectation to mm -hmm. know this is more of a like a reconnaissance ride. I'm going to go check this trail out, see what's there. Um, totally. And then that way you know it, and then you can go back and like turn it up yeah. each time. There's a lot of rides where I go on and know that I'm not going to have like a, a, an insane fun descent or, you know, this isn't going to be an epic ride. Hey, this one is like reconnaissance, like you said, like, hey, like, and I've had this in the channel where I, the Sufferfest vid, like, yeah. <laughs> climbed up for three hours in the middle of the summer some trail that ended up to be nothing and it rode back in my car. Yeah. It happens, you know, yeah. like if you're exploring your area, but at, at the same time, that exploration led me to find a single track in Marshall Canyon that I didn't know existed. And every time I go now, I, I ride down that trail, you know? So um, it's just, it's a gamble, you know? And, and uh, that's part yeah. of the fun, right? Yeah. I, is like, I think like we can get caught up in like always having to like, come back with stories of like sending it or hitting mm -hmm. some feature really hard. But sometimes like we just want to create memories that we just want to create memories. A lot of times it's easy to get caught up in like, it needs to be postable. I need to make something that's good yeah. for Instagram, you know, and come yeah. back with some like sick footy. But, you know, I don't know if it always needs to be about that. Exactly. Like some videos are about that. Some videos I do, I'm like, I'm going to try to PR this thing. Some videos, are purely informational and, you know, entertainment based or whatever, watching me suffer. But like, that, that's a good point. Like mountain biking is for me is, is about skill progression. It's about those epic descents and jumps and stuff. But uh, the reason I really got into it was the places it took me and exploring and seeing new places. I would never have, like I talked about before that ride that went on in San Luis Obispo, I would have absolutely no reason to ever be there in my life on that in that area except for my bike and i'll take that with me till the day i die like that ride epic you know whistler not only did i ride whistler and see those trails but like british columbia had no idea how beautiful it was it is like riding on the pch up a shoreline in canada like there's so much other stuff that happens outside of our rides right when we're in locations like that that our bike brings us that i've taken with me i have an equal appreciation for that trip from where I was just like physically yeah. and with the trail systems, you know, and then it's just something that like, uh, I, I grew up as a skateboarder since I was a kid. 
skateboarding has taken me places, but it's never taken me to these places, these, these in the woods, you know, that's in the, the middle of the day on a Tuesday, like, yeah. I'm yeah, I've talked part, about it. Don't do pissing on me or something. Right, exactly, dude. That's I've talked <laughs> about that before. Where I, I, there's all these things I love about skateboarding, but the the places where you would end up, you know, or uh, yeah, I, I was was could be great, but a lot of times weren't. And I feel like mountain bike biking brings a lot of the same things that we got out of skateboarding, um, but yeah. brings them to the woods, you know. Mm -hmm. And I know for me, Perfect. like, there's a lot of places like I, I don't. I don't necessarily know if I'd have gone to Sedona if I wasn't mountain biking. I'm yeah. not one of those kind of people who like, I want to go and just look like I need to be doing something. I, I yeah. have sort of, some sort of activity. I, I'm the, exactly. I mean, that's that you just said the exact thing I'm thinking like, yeah, Sedona it would always be like one of those things like, man, I'm, I'll get there someday. It's probably cool. But like having a reason to go there and do something was like, brought me there. And then I was like, holy crap. Like, yeah. I should have came here no matter what, you know, yeah. like it's pretty rad. Yeah. I think there's also something about how skateboarding kind of redefines spaces you, it, it, in redefines it in your brain in how you interact with that space. And I feel like that's really similar in mountain biking too. like the way I look at terrain. You know, I, re I remember when I was a kid and I'd be driving home from a skate spot or a, or a ramp and like, everything I saw was a, was a skate terrain. And now like mountain biking is it's, it's, it does the same thing for me. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. I, I, I've talked about this so many times, like uh, no matter how old I get, when I drive through a city, I see handrails and staircases and transition and, and flat banks off stairs. Like you can make even that when I'm 70, I'm going to be like, yeah. Um, I had a buddy that went to architecture and he started building stuff like that. <laughs> he like with that, and they loved it. Like the office buildings would love it, and, and he was like, yeah, "They have no idea how skated." <laughs> um, yeah, but totally. Like now, it's transitioned into mountain biking. Now, we, we, if I go on a hike or if I see dirt, I'm just thinking about like how, how it would bend and sculpt, and yeah, yeah I mean, like, uh, it's crazy. I guess I, if for mountain biking, I will just say like, I am thankful for. Um, the new passion that it's given me, I guess, later in my life, I didn't discover mountain biking when I was like 20. And a lot of the kids are now I had discovered it kind of like late in my thirties. And, uh, honestly, if I wasn't mountain biking right now, I, I skate a little bit, but I, I, I can't do the things I used to. I'm not jumping down 10 stairs doing handrails and I, I don't want to, that stuff was mm -hmm. never really fun for me, but, um, <laughs> it, it's not, you just turn on the camera. Like I'm gonna get hurt today. Who's yeah. got my insurance card, you know? But, um, yeah, like it's awesome that we have something that we can do not only when you're 20, but like I plan on riding for a long time and I'm in my 40s. So ah, I don't know where I'm coming off this tangent, but I guess I'm just thankful to find this thing that I care about so much. And I still still can feel the same types of feelings that I got skateboarding and learning tricks, right? Like there's nothing that feels better than doing something for your first time that you were scared of doing. And then you yeah. can add that to your bag of tricks. Like, 100%. hey now that i did that i can do it again and you get right back but do it and you're like oh it's not that that was like what ifs yeah that's yeah. heather hey, hello. hi hi <laughs> i think Here's it's you pip. there's pip there he is hey, hey pip, hey, pip. <laughs> <laughs> he's very confused he doesn't know tv it's okay so for TV. those of you who are listening on the podcast uh, Tony has a very cute dog. What what is it? What is Pip? We think he's uh he's third out of Um half papillon, maybe a little bit of chihuahua. His ears are so massive uh -huh. that we not... can't figure it out. It's like this little head with these huge ears on it. They are. They're like they're like another head, each one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'll take him. Yeah. So let me let me flip this on you then, right? So we're like totally like just you know, gushing over mountain biking. There's yeah, like, I'm sure like me, there's at least one thing that you find annoying, like in your mountain biking life. <laughs> oh man, you're throwing one at me. <laughs> I mean, what are we, what are we, are we talking specifics? Are we talking about like gear? Are we talking about like just the, whatever you what, feel, whatever you feel safe discussing, this is a safe, safe place where a whole bunch of, there's Understood. commenters. Yeah, there's not. Be it's never safe. <laughs> um, I think 
I, I wouldn't say it's it's a thing I don't like. I think coming from skate culture to mountain bike culture for me was a bit different. Like it's it's definitely a different culture, right? Like mm-hmm. there's definitely like this the the park dudes and things like that, but um yeah, the community is different. And I and I guess you asked me if this is gonna be a negative and I think I'm gonna turn it into a positive. <laughs> So okay. the skate culture is very young, right? And it's pretty like, it's it's not pretty, it's very judgy. Like being cool, blah, 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 all this stuff. When you get older, you don't really care about being cool anymore. You just are who you are. You kind of get to know who you are, right? Um, in mountain biking, it feels like at a younger age, people don't care about that as much. Even though there, even though there is a subtext, people do. Like there's kits and all that stuff. But like most people I see on the trails every day, of all age groups um, are just out there to ride. But if you go to the skate park, people make sure to have their shoes fresh, the freshest hoodie, the new Supreme jacket, mm. all that stuff is like as prioritized as uh, sucks to say, like how you're skating. And a lot of people just go to the skate park and chill. I never see anybody go to the mountain bike trail and just like post up on the trailhead, like, yo, what's up? Like, <laughs> You know, like wearing cool mountain bike stuff because you're going to be like, what are you doing? You know, it's it's a lot um, harder to be a poser uh, mountain biking because you yeah. still got to, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, the thing about I, I keep trying, trying to think of something that's annoying mountain biking. Uh, I think the okay. most annoying thing for me yeah. is, is like not knowing how to fix my bike. That is sucks. <laughs> I yeah, don't. I'm not a, a skateboard. Fixing a skateboard yeah. is pretty easy. Uh, eight yeah. bolts and yeah. two trucks and that's it mountain biking i don't have the background uh, uh to learn it over the last 10 years and like fix things so mm. any little thing goes wrong i feel like such a dork that i have to bring it to like the bike shop to be like hey my derailleur is off center can you just like show me <laughs> like that that kind of stuff stuff oh. i do know how to train, change my tires and chain though but like yeah. other than, if we want to get into stuff that sucks okay yeah. what about you uh so again kind of coming from skateboarding um, and this was one of the things, so I, I guess I kind of had, was around people who kind of appreciated differences in skateboarding and, okay. and, and I, and I think like people dug how you skated because it was you, it was like an expression of who you are. And I feel like there are, there's a whole, there's, there's a, a there's a population in mountain biking that likes to tell you how to ride your bike. Mm. I can see that. How to set yep. up your bike, how to ride your bike. Um, and it's usually just based on how they do their stuff. And yes, there are things that like work across the board, right? Like, you know, heels down, that sort of things, like those kind of things work. But like, you know, I after a certain point, you, you like you're saying, you know, you hit that milestone of like knowing about weight distribution. Yeah. Um, but like that's what annoys me is when, when there's, when people like want to tell me how to ride my bike. Yeah. Um, it's one thing yeah. if I'm like, Hey, um, I'm having trouble working this roller or this jump is freaking me out. And some, and I'm asking somebody for advice, but like that thing where you're like, Oh man, my, that, 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 that rock garden felt a little bit chunky. And then like, you get like an hour of like suggestions on how to ride yeah. it and set up your suspension. And I'm just it's like, cause your suspension is terrible. That yeah. one, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I totally get that. Yeah. yeah. There's definitely like this, like, uh, it's because you don't know as much as I do. And let me tell you how to do it. And there's mentality. so much to know, you know? Like, yeah. 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 And I think like with skateboarding, you know, it's like, like you were saying, there's like eight bolts. There's, there's not a lot you can do, you know? Uh, yeah. I, you know, I'd never had anybody be like, you know, well, you really should use the Jessup grip tape because it's better than the blah, blah, blah. And, yeah. Nobody talks about that in skating. They're just like, <laughs> yeah, get some grip. I mean, it depends. Like, you know, there's differences, but they're minor. They're yeah. really minor. In in mountain biking, like the bike you have is defining what type of terrain you're on, right? Most of the time. So, yeah. skateboarding. I have a cruiser board right here behind me, but I'm not going to take that to the skate park. I have one to, to go to the grocery store, and I have one to actually skate on. And like, those are like hundred dollar items. Bikes. Yeah. When I tell people that don't mountain bike how much my bike is, they mm-hmm. think I'm freaking crazy. Yeah. They don't understand at all. And maybe, you know, years ago, if you said that to me, I would have a bike worth this much. They'd be, I'll be like, hey, you're freaking crazy too. But hey, you get into something and uh, 
it's not only how I've been going off on a tangent here, like I usually do. Mountain biking is not only like mental health, but it, it I don't know. Yeah, well, it is mental health, but it, it's not only physical health, but it's mental health. That's what I right. have to say. You know, like it's something I take with me away from the ride that keeps me in a positive way and it makes me think about that. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a, like for a lot of people that commented on my channel saying that like mountain biking has been a cure for depression, yeah. things like that. They've lost weight. They gained confidence, you know, mm -hmm. like, dude, totally yeah. agree with all those things. And I could see them like it's a lifestyle. It's good stuff. So mm -hmm. we're kind of coming up on time, getting ready for our, the exit exam. But mm -hmm. um, I, I think we're going to have to have you on again. Um, because okay. I, because I wanted to talk to you at some point about like the kind of the YouTuber aspect of things and how oh, it's yeah. kind of affected you and stuff like that. But we don't have time for that today. Um, let me know in the comments, uh, viewers and listeners, if you want this guy back, uh, for, for a follow up at some point, um, we'll see how that works out. So dude, yeah, this has been really awesome. Yeah, man. Like, we're 40, just hanging out. Jeez, 45 minutes just like flew by. Like I had no idea it was that much. Yeah. I, I think the, the last time I, I talked to you, I was like, let's just not make it an hour long. And then like we're at an hour. <laughs> <laughs> it goes by so quick. It really does. Yeah. So, all right. All right. So, all right uh, viewers and listeners, uh, I like to do a bit of an exit exam uh, with the person being interviewed. And so let me, let me cue this up. It is... The exit exam is this, mountain biking, the imaginary organi organization in charge of mountain biking has asked you to help write the mountain biker license exam. What are three questions that must be included on this test? And that's assuming that there's there's other questions. There's maybe 30 yeah. questions, but you're writing. I got, very, I got very specific on this because I didn't know how else to answer it. So I will start off by saying, number one, 27s or 29s and tell me why. And the answer, if you get it correct, is if you just explain why and it makes sense. There's no right or wrong. Just explain why nice. you think and then that's it. So that, that it's, a, it's a good understanding of what you uh, are, are getting from, you know, that's number one. Number two. When making a corner, because this was huge for me, when making a corner, either right or left, which foot should be down? Okay, that's <laughs> all right. Yeah, it's cool. Number two. That's good. Number three, name two apps. There's really only two that are going <laughs> to help you navigate trails. I've said this already, but like that is like um, if you, you are to? starting out, if you're if you're going for your mountain biking license exam. You need to know these two things, otherwise you're going to be lost, and we're going to have to send in a helicopter for you because you don't know where the hell you are. <laughs> That's <laughs> rad. So, is one of those apps YouTube? No, nah, <laughs> for my channel. For my channel, I did. <laughs> yeah, I'll take the Outsider MTB as an answer and Trail Force. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Alan. <laughs> Wow, it's been really good having you on. Um, again, if you don't already subscribe to this guy, check him out. Tony from the Outsider MTB channel. Um, you do new videos every Monday at 5 p.m., right? Yep. He brings your map to life. That's um, what I do. And he does that stuff. He's your personal digital trail guide. Um, all right, so if you dug this video, um, hit the like button. Also, hit me with any comments. If you have any follow-up questions uh, for Tony, then we have him on again. We can we can use those as as, as questions. If you don't mind that, do you mind that? Viewer question? No, no, I would love that. I'm definitely, I, I would like to be on here more than and again. Oh, Let's do this. Oh. How about we just do me every, me and you every week? We have <laughs> it might turn into that. <laughs> <laughs> um, All right. No, I'm yeah. definitely down to come on again, for sure. Okay. Let's, we have so much to talk about. Heck yeah. So hit him with a bunch of questions. Hit me with questions um, and hit the like button. Um, if you're not already subscribed, check to see if you're subscribed. If you're not, go down there, hit that subscribe button, and we will see you next week.